Russ Kickle and it's time for another episode of American Reef. Today we're going to go over some of the lessons that I learned over the past eight months of using the all-in-one bio pellets with the Triton Aquatics Media Reactor. So if I'm you, the first question I'd ask myself is, hey, did those all-in-one bio pellets with that media reactor work? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, the next question I would ask is, were you able to achieve your goals? And the answer to that is no. And the, the best way to kind of uh, at least define a little bit better what I mean by um, them working and me not meeting my goals is to kind of review what I did. And I'll share some of the lessons that I learned in the process, which will kind of lead you to where I got the, uh, the answers to those two questions. So where we left off last time is I had the media reactor in this particular test tank, get my media going, and um, what I wanted to do was run it in here for a while just to see if everything was okay. Well, the first lesson that I were, learned, excuse me, with probably 24 to 48 hours, is that little maxi jet pump that I had attached to that media reactor wasn't gonna do it meaning that when I came up, I noticed a couple things. First of all, the media itself kind of shed, caught dirt, debris, whatever you want to call it. And then in that reactor, it kind of restricted the flow a little. When that happened, part of the media basically sat idle, for the lack of a better word. And the other half of it would kind of percolate up. So only one half was kind of working as I would have liked it. At that point I thought, well, I kind of thought I was going to need more media, so why not just take and add a bigger pump to it. What I did, got this Cichet, I think it's a 3.0, basically it will, um, it will put somewhere around 700-ish gallons per hour through that reactor, so plenty, plenty flow. Put it through there, let it run for probably another two days or so, and the same thing happened, meaning one side of it would be relatively idle. The other side really kind of had a lot of flow going through it. And I, I thought about it for a little bit and said, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Um, and ultimately I came to the conclusion it wasn't a thing at all. Meaning that the reason why we have circulation going through there anyway um, is not only for the, uh, for the filtration to take place, but so the, the traditional kind of bio, bio pellets wouldn't stick together and clump together. Right, so that surface area, you know, all the surface area on the food basically would be um, um, available, we'll say. And so to that point, I looked at it and thought, again, different media, and I've still got some pretty good circulation going on here. So to that point, I didn't bother with it. My next goal at that point was to kind of seed that reactor. So how is it going to seed it? Well, in here, basically, I would just feed the tank a little bit with some food, and um, ultimately, I would test it to see if my phosphates and nitrates would ray, rise and lower, and that sort of thing. And ultimately, I got to the point where um, the, the phosphates and nitrates kind of crested, and they started dropping off. And to that point, I thought, hey, it's time to kind of move on to the next phase of the test. So what I did is I took that reactor out of here, and I actually added it to my Gorgonian tank. Not in that Gorgonian tank, not a whole lot of livestock, only um, one fish, one snail. And with there, again, the next lesson that I learned is I didn't have enough media, meaning I started off with probably 200-ish ml, and uh, basically, you know, I saw my phosphates and nitrates kind of rise, and it wasn't being managed, so I added more media to it. Basically, on that tank, I added about 500 ml, and then I kind of got to that equilibrium where my phosphates and nitrates were pretty much managed. Uh, time frame, I can't quite remember how long it took. Uh, I know it took longer than I expected. I want to say probably around six-ish weeks, something like that, um, before kind of things kind of, again, fell into that equilibrium. At that point, I thought, okay, now I know that reactor's going. Um, I'm going to take and put that down in my 110 gallon tank. Now, the lesson learned there was, you know, I had a full bio load on that 110 gallon tank tank, meaning, you know, you see all the tangs in there. I mean, the size of my hand, right? I've got whatever, you know, almost a dozen. 
and I feed that tank constantly. So I should have realized then that I needed to add more media, but I didn't, right? Um, again, uh, poor kind of planning on my part. So either way though, I put that media reactor down there because in my mind, I, hey, it was ready to go. And I really thought that these, uh, these bio pallets, right, the all-in-one bio pallets would really do a good job at reducing phosphates and nitrates. So what I wanted to do is I wanted to see how good of a job they really did. You know, I've got a tank that's running good, and my phosphates and nitrates were low. So what I did is I took off the GFO and stripped out all of the macroalgaes. Um, other than that, everything else kind of remained the same. And remember, I hadn't been running the, uh, the bio pallets on that particular tank. Um, as far as skimmers go, I did have that little Tunzi 9004 skimmer on there. Again, it's not a big skimmer. It was just something to supplement the, the, the skimming in that particular tank. Um, long story made short, everything is rising, right? Phosphates, nitrates, etc. So it dawned on me at that point in time, I needed to add more media into that reactor. And I knew it was going to take longer to kind of get caught up until I hit that point of equilibrium. And um, as such, what I did is I did, I did water changes to kind of keep my phosphates and nitrates down. Um, as it relates to kind of where I hit that equilibrium, well, at about 1,500 ml of the, uh, the all-in-one bio pallets, that's when basically my phosphates and nitrates would basically remain constant. Now, I, I say remain constant. I, didn't, I wasn't able to dive them down the, the levels that I really wanted. Um, but it stopped going and I was able to maintain. And those levels on the phosphate was like 0.44-ish, somewhere around that, that area. And on the nitrates, I want to say it was around 50-ish kind of parts per million, right? And ultimately, this test lasted, you know, again, we're talking many months. Um, and so I kind of got to that point of equilibrium. Then I looked at it and said, okay, well, what's my goal here, right? Again, I wanted to basically eliminate a reactor. I didn't want to have bio pallets and GFO. Right? Basically, I wanted to be able to eliminate just my GFO because before I had removed the bio pallets. And uh, my goal then would have been to have basically a sump with uh, that ceramic bio media in there, um, the Miracle Mud uh, refugium area right, with basically this one reactor and it was all done. So I would have the um, the other reactor as it relates to kind of the uh, GFO out of the picture. I looked at it and I would have needed to add another reactor to it with more media to kind of get there. And it was something that I just want, didn't want to do because if I'm going to go that route, um, one of the things that I would do is just keep kind of the, the dual reactors that I got for the GFO. Um, now the lessons learned there, for example, would be um, when you are installing the all-in-one bio pallets with that reactor. As I had mentioned earlier, um, you'll notice when you're putting in that media that it's kind of dirty, meaning that um, the, the directions recommend that you put it into a sponge filter, and the reason for that is because when you first put it in there, it is a little bit dirty, and you get this brownish kind of, whether it's GFO, it's a slime, whatever that is, and it will clog up um, and go into your main tank, so you can kind of see uh, by the sponge that I used, it does a real good job catching that. And all I did is I took one of those uh, canisters that have the grills in the bottom that I normally have my GFO in, and I threw a sponge filter in there and I let the water kind of go down through it and then go through the bottom so it acted at different levels, right? The sponge would carry, or catch, excuse me, the smaller pieces, and um, the grills down at the bottom would catch kind of larger pieces that that media reactor would kind of throw out. Um, so again, that's one of the, one of the other lessons learned there. Um, you know, and so at the end of kind of where we are at today, I've got a media reactor who right now it has probably about a thousand-ish ml of all-in-one bio pallets. Um, and um, from there, I have it going and you can kind of see where the macro algae, since there were a lot more phosphates and nitrates in that water column, it has kind of came back from that root structure that's there. Um, and I, I, again, I'm not able to kind of get it down to lower levels. So at this point, what I'm going to do is rather than adding another reactor for the all-in-one bio pallets, I'm just going to take and put my old GFO reactor back on. And then basically I'll take this reactor and convert it basically to the traditional bio pallets, right? To kind of drop those nitrates. 
As it relates to any other lessons that I've learned during this kind of exercise, uh, one of them would actually be with the loading of the media, meaning after you take the media and you let it set for that 24, 48 hours to kind of let it sink, right, or to absorb the water, the other thing you're going to want to do is load it into the reactor. Well, what I found very convenient was if you take the packaging that the media actually comes in, right, those bags, and if you actually fill it up with water and use it as kind of a vehicle to pour it into the reactor, it tends to channel the media a lot easier. Now, again, you will get some of the media in that center tube. So for me, I just kind of put the plumbing on and kind of blow it out. That, that way, uh, there's no issue as far as that back siphoning or any clogging up that kind of supply water there. Um, and I'd say those are probably the, the main ones. Again, and be prepared to kind of change that media. Uh, when I say media, the sponge media, probably anywhere between a week-ish afterwards because it will have that kind of slimy kind of coating stuff. Um, but other than that, those would probably be the main lessons that I learned from, um, from this particular exercise. Let's talk about the tank for a second. While I was using the bio pellets, uh, did the tank look better, worse, or anything like that? To me, the tank looked pretty much the same as it did when I started. Even though I was playing around with the nitrates and phosphates, um, as you can see from the video, it still looked nice. I had good polyp extension. Everything's still kind of colored up. So I'm happy with the media as it relates to kind of any ill effects. Because you hear some hobbyists talk about when they implemented uh, the uh, the bio pellets, for example, uh, that they didn't like the way that the corals looked. Maybe they dolled up or something like that. And I didn't see that in this particular case. So again, from that particular kind of viewpoint, vantage point, whatever you want to call it, this whole exercise, my tank looked good. Um, maybe I stunted the growth of the coral just a little bit by playing the games, but at the same time, um, that worked out fine as well. So now that I've kind of explained the testing, what I did and my results, I hope now that the answers that I gave at the beginning of the segment make a little more sense. Meaning, you know, do the on-one biopilots work? Yes. Um, did I achieve my goals? No. Um, if I would have got a larger reactor, chances are I would have. Uh, but that's kind of part of for the course and uh, also it's one of the reasons why I do these kind of videos as well, right? So I make the mistakes and you don't have to, right? That way it's an efficient use of your time and money. So what's next for that tank? Um, basically for the next two-ish, four-ish weeks, I'm just going to let it settle down, right? Let it be nice and stable. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to experiment a little bit with skimming. Meaning, I've always had this kind of suspicion, I'll call it, that um, many small skimmers were better than one big skimmer. Um, for a couple reasons. Number one, I felt that you could ultimately take and set one skimmer up as kind of doing wet skimming while the other one is doing kind of dry skimming because we know there's benefits for both. Um, and there were things along that kind of thought process that I always wanted to experiment with to just to kind of see if, uh, if it were true or not. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take the existing setup that I've got now and then what I'm going to do is add some more of those 904 Tunzi skimmers to it and I'm going to see just from a reduction of, you know, again the nitrates for example, does the extra skimming pay off? We know that Mike Paletta, for example, on his tanks, it does big time because he doesn't use uh, any of the bio pellets, but where he's at is he has his ecosystem miracle mud kind of refugium, and, um, and from there, he'll skim the heck out of it, meaning I think he's got a bubble king on the one tank, he's got the uh, vertex on the other tank, right? And, you know, his logic is, hey, you're going to feed these tanks a lot, so you need to have that aggressive skimming in there. And I think by going with many smaller ones, I'm going to be able to basically do a more effective job than having one big one. As far as the products themselves, meaning uh, the all-in-one bio pallets or uh, that reactor, for example, you can find that at Aquarium Specialty. Uh, I know Premium Aquatics also has the all-in-one bio pallet, so you can go out there and again, you know my mantra, right? I only work with good, honest guys that deserve a chance to earn your business, so uh, give them a chance, right? Uh, other than that, again, I hope that you found value in these videos. And again, if you're kind of a reef keeping guy, a new guy who's learning to keep coral reef uh, aquariums, um, I have a ton more videos out on iTunes. Um, if you go to AmericanReef.com, go to the Reef Tutor section, and you'll see basically uh, I've got three or four seasons out there where you know hundreds of hours of video that will allow you to keep and maintain a uh, saltwater and coral reef aquarium. So again. Do it on iTunes so that way you can make them portable, right? At work, in a car, on a bus, wherever your kind of lighting is. If you've got some kind of iTunes device, then you can play them. Um, and again, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at AmericanReef at me.com. 
Again, my name is Russ Kickle. Thanks for watching this episode of American Race.